was a week in my legs but strong in the body. <laughs> there we go. Just how am I going to start? I hardly know what to say to you, but we start at the very beginning when I first came to St. Andrews. It was on the year 1929. At the time, there was no airplanes, there was no radio, there was no television, there was no internet, and it took me five days, exactly six days, to get from my home in St. John's to St. Andrews. Five days on a boat from St. John's to Montreal, and another day then by train and trans different land transport to get here to St. Andrews. It was quite a job. But before I go on further than that, let me tell you that I, my legs are weak. I have to have this little old baby carriage with me all the time. But my upper body is pretty strong. Do you want to sit down? No, I'm going to stand up. <laughs> and, uh, I tell people that I'm like Peter Pan. I never grow old. <laughs> I still think young and act young even though I haven't got the body to keep up with it, but I'm doing the best I can. As you're told, I celebrated my 100th birthday on July the last, uh, last year, and that will be 101 in a short time. It's a pleasure to be here and tell you something about my first days in St. Andrews. After the six days that I spent coming here, my mother accompanied me from St. John's to St. Andrews. We arrived here on the first day of September 1928, and we arrived in the office of Dr. D. Bruce MacDonald. Most of you remember that he was the headmaster of this school for many years, one of the popular headmasters. I've told people that I sat down in D. Bruce MacDonald's office with my mother, she and the doctor, Drew D. Bruce, had a conversation about me, and I sat there like a mouse, <laughs> frightened to death, that I was in the presence of this great man. But anyway, the end result was that I was left at the college, and my mother went home, and I spent nine months here in St. Andrews in my first year before I got back to my home. I did that, I did that for three years. Those years were spent, as I, as I was here, I remember that the most of the boys, and there were numbers a little over 200 at the time, most of the boys were from Toronto. But there was a few other places. I had a friend from Captain's Casey, for instance. I had another friend from um, Belleville and so on. But most of the boys were from the Toronto area. and. Uh, on those weekends, they would be able to go home to their parents, but I wasn't able to do that, and consequently I spent my time here in the college. Now let me see, I'll do a bit of thinking, see what I'm going to tell you. Uh, memories I have about the school. You know, when I came here, there was no chapel. There was no McDonald's house. I watched both of those buildings being built. And I remember that for the chapel, we had a Toronto, the uh, whole cadet corps, attended a church service. Now, I don't know the name of the church, but it was located on the west of Young Street and Lower Street, about a block over there where there was a hotel there. There that hotel. And after that service, we'd get out and we'd form up and we'd march all across Young Street, all along Lower, across Young, and over. There was, I can't tell you the name of that. As you get over about 500 yards, Lower Street goes down and up. Some of you might know it. And the train used to go down and up and park in front of Braxham Hall. <laughs> you know where Braxham Hall is? <laughs> and that's where they were dismissed. <laughs> and the boys that lived in Toronto got the day in Toronto for the day when fellows like me were carried them back to the school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You see, Sorry. I don't know whether they're doing it for you today or not, but 
Uh, they used to have a dance fair for the boys, and the senior boys had their ladies come, and they had good dances here. I was never old enough for that. I never got to do that. But I was a nuisance on those things. I remember the place used to be decorated with balloons around the steps in that house, and we used to throw pins at the balloons. <laughs> The pins would hit the moon, right? they go bang, you know? <laughs> so we were a bit of a nuisance too, you know? I had another case that I remember I got away with it, you know? I suppose, how many of you are, 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 are pulling stunts and doing things you shouldn't do? I guess every one of you don't know. But uh, if I, I, um, I was one day, we used to make a water bomb. You ever make a water bomb? <laughs> you fold the paper up and turn it into a water bomb. Never done it? I never sure. how to do that. <laughs> but you fill that with water. One day I was up on the third floor in the bathroom and there was two or three boys walking along and I had a water and I threw it down. It passed on the street in front of them. They looked up and they came looking for me. <laughs> they never found me. <laughs> but I don't know what would have happened to me if they ever did. <laughs> you know, well, talking about being naughty, Bill. Huh? Talking about being naughty, did you ever get caned? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Well, I'll tell you, there were some that did. <laughs> and it wasn't a very pleasant thing to look forward to. No. That was Dave Bruce's job. It was Dave Bruce McDonald's job. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I don't think I was ever, not only caned, but anywhere in any way. I was a goodie. <laughs> I got it once. Right to death, I have to talk. Yeah. Any questions yeah. from the board? Uh, yeah. How was the food? <laughs> How was the food? Food was quite good. Mm -hmm. The dining table, for instance, I have um, uh, for breakfast. As far as I was concerned, I had no complaints on the food all the way through. I was happy with it. But a couple of stories about that. We sat in the dining room and there was about, I think it was ten, eight or ten at a table. There was, I think it was two fours, maybe not ten, and one at the end. When we walked in in the morning, um, on the table would be a, a plain table of toast and a bowl of bananas. First we'd have grace, and after grace, if there was ten boys, there was ten hands went out for that bowl of bananas right away, I got one. We never ate the toast, the first toast that came in. We always hid it away and asked for seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it was always on the, on the table so long it wasn't hardly fit to eat. So that's what we would do. And so that's my memory about that. But on the other hand, I don't know if you say grace at the present time at the dining room. If you do, maybe some of you say it for me. But my partly my memory of is Pro-peace. No. <laughs> Pro omnes to is benefictes. Yes. Domnes gratis reverender arguments. Okay. That's it. Yeah. What did I leave out? A little bit. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Pro omnes to is benefictes. Domnes gratis reverender arguments. Very good. <laughs> Dunlap Hall look like then? Oh, Dunlap Hall, I'd say it looks much the same as it does today. But Dunlap Hall, of course, was, see, when I came here first, it was Dunlap Hall, the Vell House, the Dining Hall, Memorial House, and the Headmaster's House. Headmaster still live in that house? Yep. Yes. You see? <laughs> and the housemaster for Dunlap for Dun for Flavel House lived in the house at the end of Flavel House. A uh, Mr. Tudpole, by the name, you may remember the name. He was my housemaster all the time I was here. And that was uh, that was where I lived on the third floor of Flavel House. I was here for three years. The first year I was in the hall I bedroom on the third floor, right opposite the stairs. There was four of us in the room. The next year I was in the hall on the back, on the end, over the headmaster, over the do, head, housemaster's house. I was had it in a room to myself. I had it all that's to myself. Right. No, that's right. And the third year I was in a room opposite that. There was four of us. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
It's his room That's now. my room right now. Or two. Huh? Which one? The one you the just one you just mentioned. Uh, pug yeah. one or single right? one? Pug yeah. one. Yeah. Single one. Single, single one. one. Yeah. We use <coughs> we use we use to uh, you know there's a window opening in that room over the headmaster's room. All right. Oh, that's, that's probably your. Yeah. We used to open that window. We had a toaster. We'd always have a just like the red in the night time. We put the toaster out on the red window. And put it in the <laughs> Sorry, Jackson. Favorite subject. Yeah. What was your favorite subject in school? My favorite what? Your favorite subject. What was your favorite subject to study at school? I can't get the last word. Favorite what? Subject. Subject. Favorite course. course. Your favorite course. Class. Oh, yeah, course. Sorry. <laughs> well, I don't know whether I had a favorite one, but mathematics was always my strongest point. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was probably mathematics and geography. I enjoyed history, and especially I enjoyed Canadian history. I don't know if you taught Canadian history today, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> and that thing, I'd like to tell you that, I'd like you to tell you that we have a fighting force in Newfoundland known as the Royal Newfoundland Regiment. <laughs> the Royal Newfoundland Regiment was active in the fight against the Americans here in York. As a matter of fact, I read a little while ago a bit of the history. There was a book out with the history of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment at the present time, which dictates all the battles in which they were involved. And they were very much involved in the battles in this area. And one of the things they said on that was that in that battle they had fought with the Canadians at the time against the Americans had been won by the Americans, there'd be no Canada today. <laughs> but they won it and they're recognized for it. And at the present time, we are celebrating the Royal Newfoundland, the Elizabeth of Newfoundland, especially on the 1st of July, in recognition of, the, of, of what they did in the First World War. Melissa? Oh. Who was his favorite teacher and why? <laughs> Who was your favorite teacher and why? Can't remember. <laughs> I, I don't think I had a favorite teacher. Not or did I have one I didn't like. No. Good answer. <coughs> Jamie? <coughs> Was there a cadet formal dance after what? the end of cadets? What? Did you have a dance after the end of cadets? No. No, there was dances, but not particularly at the end of the day. Yeah. 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 How was the library like? Yeah. Oh, nice question. <laughs> <laughs> what was the library like? What the what? The library. Where you was know, it? I can't remember a library. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was there one? There was a library in each house. Yes. Oh, in the houses. Oh. So the libraries were in the house. So what? in Flavel House, you had a library. No, not particularly. <laughs> so, we, St. Andrews wasn't the colony, college today, that, in that day, that it is today. We weren't looked after. We wouldn't have a nothing, not a session like this. This would not have happened in the old St. Andrews. We went, came here as boarders in a school, and we went to our classes, and we went back to our room. Had no further contact with anybody. We didn't even sometimes have a teacher in the room where we gathered to do our homework, you know. And we gathered in the in the room in the, in the bell house every night to do our homework all on our own, completely. So it's a different school altogether today by many, many ways. I remember one night, though, in that school, while we were practicing, a bat got in the outer room. And a bat started flying around. And I remember the boys going crazy, trying to get the bat. They were throwing books at it and everything. <laughs> but outside of that, that's the only memory I got of it. <laughs> okay, we'll have, sorry, we'll have one more question. If there is one more question. Yeah, Kevin. What was his best memory? 
Okay. <coughs> what was your best memory of being at St Andrews? What? Your favourite memory of St Andrews? Well, I don't know what a favourite. All my memories of St Andrews are good. Yeah. And you know, in spite of the fact that we're so far away, we had to get takes so long to get here. I guess I have visited St. Andrews as much as 20, 25 times. Quite often, never speaking to anybody when I came here, but I was in the habit of driving with my wife back and forth from St. John's to Toronto, where my family was. And every time I was there, I would come to St. Andrews and drive around, even though I never spoke to anybody. And I guess I did that 15 or 20 times, and no one spoke to a soul. Just came in. I was able to watch the growth of St. Andrews, you know, from time because, like I said, the first time I visited was in 1927, 1937. I visited here with my sister. And you'll be interested to know I came out of the Honeymoon Bridge two years after we crossed over, it collapsed in the river. And um, you'll be interested to know that when we landed in Montreal, I had to go to an office and get what they call a tourist license to drive the car and enter Canada. <laughs> when I crossed back into Canada from the States that day, the immigration people weren't going to let me in because I was driving a tour with a tourist license. They told me we were part of sitting here in Newfoundland. It took me a long time to persuade them that we weren't a part. And we didn't become a part of Canada until 1949. By the way, one of the things I'm enjoying today is the, the red and white jackets that I see here. <laughs> I, I, I think, I, think I, I don't think I told you before, but if I repeat it, if I repeat myself, stop me. But um, if you made the first team in my day, you got to wear a white jacket. But if you made a second or third or fourth team, you had to wear the red. I don't think you do that today. Well, no. That was the thing in those days. You know, I, did, I meant to tell you first of all that as you see me here, I'm weak in the legs, but I'm fairly strong in the body. I tell people often, quite often that while I'm old, a hundred years old, is only in body, in mind I'm still young. I tell them I'm like Peter Pan. You know who Peter Pan is? <laughs> If you don't know who Peter Pan is, the next time you take your eyes back, plug it in. Peter Pan never grew old. There's monuments to Peter Pan existent in the world. There's one in the, there's one in the U.S. Uh, pardon me, one in the United Kingdom. There's one in St. John's. And there's one in California. And there may be three more. They're fairly popular, fairly prominent. So if you don't know who Peter Pan was, Look it up on your iPad. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Just plug the Peter Pan, you'll get the story. Yeah, so. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.